I'm a 28-year-old female who lives alone in a usually very normal, very boring neighborhood. Every weekday, I leave at 7 and return at 4. Last Friday, I opened my office and did my usual routine until it was time to catch up on paperwork. I reached up to pull down my reading glasses, but they weren't on my head or my desk or in my purse. They were nowhere. Worried I left them at home, I pulled up my camera footage to watch myself leave the house. Sure enough, I wasn't wearing them. Just as I was about to close the video, I saw three men walking along the sidewalk, and I watched them out of curiosity. I assumed they were heading to the bus stop, but then they turned towards my house. Keep in mind, these are cheap cameras. There's no motion detection. We don't have much crime in my area, so if I don't have a reason to check the recordings, I never see them. Anyway, the men walked across my lawn, went into the backyard, and crawled through my kitchen window. Horrified, I began skipping through the footage, waiting to see them exit. But there was no further movement. They were still inside, in real time. My office is one street over from the police station. So a unit arrived there first. As soon as I showed them the video, they sent extra cars to my house. The three men had robbed the convenience store behind my street, and their getaway car abandoned them. The police had been searching for them all morning. I watched live footage of several officers entering my house. They could be heard yelling, telling the men inside to freeze and drop their weapons. Then, there was the horrifying sound of several gunshots and screams of pain. I've never actually heard someone yell like that. The officers who had stayed with me left immediately, but the fight was over before they arrived. I watched as one suspect was brought out in handcuffs. There was no sign of the other two. A few minutes later, an ambulance arrived to take away a wounded policeman. I later learned that he was shot in the abdomen, but thankfully, he's expected to make a full recovery. The other two suspects were dead, and it was several hours before I was allowed back into my own house. The surviving intruder said they happened to see me leaving this morning and decided to hide in my house for the sake of convenience. They saw I didn't have a ring cam, but didn't look too hard for other cameras until they got inside. Of course, I've since upgraded my security. Now, everything is covered, except for my bathrooms. What freaks me out the most is that my glasses were in the bottom of my purse the whole time. If I hadn't overlooked them on my first search, I would have never checked the cameras. I go months at a time without even opening the app. Had I gone home while those men were inside, there probably wouldn't have been time to call for help. I really don't like thinking about that too much. Oh, and one other neat little fact. The horrifying mess that was created in my home, I had to clean up most of it myself. Otherwise, I would have had to live with it until a cleaning crew could come out on Monday. I'm still waiting on a contractor to fix the bullet holes in my walls. So, yeah, I just really encourage everyone to take their security seriously, regardless of where you live. I got stabbed three times, in my ribs on my left side, and one nasty stab, one millimeter, from my heart, which punctured my lung. Doctors were amazed I even survived. I'm gonna try to go into as much detail as possible about the experience itself. If you're fighting, like I was, you don't feel the knife going in due to all the adrenaline. This guy, he's already tried to jack me before, I've never seen him pull a weapon on somebody, but he was literally always bothering somebody, and he loved hanging out in my local strip mall. On the day I got stabbed, he must have seen me hit the ATM and was feeling bold. He ran up on me the moment I turned the corner to get to my car. Luckily, I caught a glimpse of him just as it was happening, and I managed to hit him in the face as he tried to hit me in mine. Then while practically embracing each other and punching each other, 
I realized something hurts. Then the guy started running, and I seemed to calm down. But I started to feel this warm liquid just running down my chest. Each time I breathed, more liquid would shoot out. The sensation is that of a warm water bottle being poured down your chest. Mind you, blood is thicker than water, so just picture water being a bit heavy and very slimy. Then, the pain started to kind of kick in. With the pain came the realization that I was seeing and feeling blood ooze from my body. About that time, I started getting this feeling like being poked a thousand times with needles all over my legs. I started losing a ton of breath and breathing became a chore. Each breath, it just got shorter and shorter and you can't do anything about it. You can't even take a full breath. When you try, your body just doesn't let it in and you just get a really heavy pain with each inhale. Worst of all, you're not taking in any of that air. After that, you lose your energy in your legs, they give up completely. They become straight-up noodles and you fall down fast. At that point, you'll barely be able to get up because your legs literally cannot stand. I was bleeding out for 14 minutes on the street. Next thing I noticed is my hearing It started to fade. It's like when you go underwater, but the hearing effect is a bit less heavy. As time went on, the underwater hearing effect started to become stronger, and I could barely hear the people or sounds around me. They were completely disorienting. I swear you'll think I'm making this up, but when someone talks, you get this echo effect with their voice. Like yelling into a canyon, canyon, canyon. how you can still hear your voice echo a few more times. When the officer was eventually talking to me, I literally could hear the cop say one sentence, and then I'd hear just the echo effect. It would sound like he said it three or four times. Each time, his voice fading further away. Next, my vision started getting black. My eyes were open, but my vision started getting really dark. It was like a black circle just closing in, and I could just see this small pin drop of light in the middle. The rest became blurry. That's probably what people mean when they say the light at the end of the tunnel, because that's literally what it looked like. At that point, it was 18, 19 minutes into my stabbing, and I had just started hearing a ringing noise in my ears. And then I swear to God, literally all my pain just went away. It was this weird, peaceful, like quietness, and it just makes you want to close your eyes and go to sleep. At that point... I didn't even fear dying. It was so surreal and peaceful. No pain. It was such a weird experience, and I swear I'm not crazy or a religious person. It was very tempting to just close my eyes and let go. But literally, I was thinking of my mom and the pain my family would go through for years. I fought so hard to stay awake. I believe that while in that state, if I would have closed my eyes... That would have been the end of my life. I had some random, really nice people come to me. One of them with braids wouldn't let me close my eyes. They would do a light slap on my face. He placed my head on his lap and would stop me multiple times from closing my eyes. His other friends were putting pressure on my wound. They didn't even care that they were getting my blood on their clothes or hands. I never got to see those people again, so if for some reason... You're reading this. Thanks. You literally helped me stay alive, and I thank you for being by my side. Humans sometimes need other humans, you know? I appreciate it. This was 1.30 a.m. by a guitar center that will hopefully help you remember, so again, thank you. Hope that gives you all a clear picture of what it feels like to be stabbed, in my case, right in the middle of your chest.